Hi everybody, welcome to Dandelion Cottage. I'm Leslie Watkins and it's Watercolor Wednesday. So I hope you're all well. Things are going pretty good here. We had a little snow and uh, even though there were uh, some snowdrops and some other things poking up through the snow. So I went out this morning and I collected a few little odds and ends that I'm going to share with you. And I'm going to show you how to make a quick little sprig to decorate a note card or some stationery or just to give somebody as a special present to cheer them up. So here we go. So these are some of the flowers I found today. I've got a, a hellbore. Let me get that so you can see it. Isn't that beautiful? Okay, so these are also called Christmas roses um, because they will bloom in winter. And actually this plant that I have sometimes blooms twice, once in winter and once in early spring, just before Easter. And this is what the leaf looks like. And then I also have some sprigs of Daphne. And uh, I always look forward to seeing this each year. This is one of the most early You can get a close up on that. Now some of these Daphne's are extremely fragrant. Um, mine is not, but I'm very fond of it because it blooms so early and also because it was one of the, uh, the shrubs that was on the property when I bought my house. So I have sentimental feelings to it. And as I was roaming around, um, I found these little fellas. Okay, so I've got a, a couple of Johnny Jump Ups here, which I did not expect to see this soon, but we have had some warm days, so they will be very cute to put in our picture. So I'm just going to put these things aside. And I'm um, just putting them just outside of the camera range because I'm going to use them for inspiration while I design this little sprig. So this is hot press watercolor paper and I've torn it down to size to fit on a note card, a standard size note card. The card base is um, four and a quarter by five and a half. This is slightly smaller in a regular shape and size. So just for, for those of you who are unaccustomed to watercolor paper, it's better if you can tear the edges rather than cut them and give it a sharp edge. So what you're trying to mimic is what we call the deckle edge, which is this natural edge along here and so um, when we make the when we tear down the larger sheet of paper we want the other edges to look similar to that so that's why we tear it and um, and just so you know at the end of the program today stay tuned because I have a special announcement coming up about um, online classes for those of you who are interested in in watercolor and card making so what I want is, I want to leave a little area down here for a sentiment, which I'll put on later. And I want to use the hellbore as my main performer here. This is the star. So I'm going to situate that so that it's just in this area. 
and I see it has five leaves. And of course, it's got this wonderful pin cushion in the center. Now don't, if you have a, a flower or a specimen that's getting kind of old and raggedy, it's getting some spots or the leaves are getting some yellow in it, sometimes they make the best subjects for your, for your work. So don't be afraid to put some of that in. It gives you a nice opportunity to add some additional color to what otherwise would be plain green. So for instance, if we look at this leaf, we see this, you know, this, this, is a, this is an evergreen perennial, and these leaves have been out all winter, and they've taken a lot of abuse. Now in the spring, they're going to send up some fresh new green leaves. We'll cut these old ones off. But in the meantime, some of these distinguishing features can be very interesting. So I want to get a... Uh, an idea of the shape of the leaf. And they have a little bit of um, toothiness on the edges, which I'll worry about later on. But right now I just kind of want to get the gesture. Now I don't mind if it goes over this area so much over here, because that will be covered up by the sentiment later. So I hope everybody's well and that you're staying indoors. I've found that I'm getting an awful lot of things done that I normally wouldn't. I'm finally getting around to getting my website updated, so I hope you'll check that out in the next couple of days as I continue to work on it. And, and I'm sorry it's taken me so long, but it's not the easiest thing in the world to do. It is coming along, and pretty soon I'll be able to, to register you online for the classes. So that's what I'm trying to get done. Now what I'm doing is I'm taking... taking advantage of some of these clumps or whorls. They're not actually whorls, but they, they're opposite. But they look kind of like whorls because they're opposite and alternate, I guess you would say. And I'm using them to support the outline of my hellbore petal. Like so. And I'll just bend this over to fill this area. And I'll put another one going up this way to balance that out. All right. And I think my little Johnnies will go right in here. I'll just tuck them in as a little bright accent. And I, though I only have two, I'm going to put three. I'm just going to have a little indication of those. All right, and then maybe one more leaf poking through here and going in that direction. Okay. So that's my sketch. And I'm going to start by putting a couple of light washes. So here's some, and I'm just, as always, I'm just using red, yellow, and blue. And uh, once I get my watercolor classes up, I'll go into a lot more detail of the actual colors that I use 
and various mixtures and uh, any additional colors that that we add on later. So that's that's coming right up, folks. I appreciate your patience. Uh, the technology is not the easiest thing in the world, and I've got so many steps that I have to follow. I'm getting there. I'm going for progress, not perfection. So by putting these little spots of color here and there, it helps me to, uh, to see how my composition is developing. And I'm keeping it very light so as not to commit to anything just yet because I may want to make some changes. Now, um, one piece of progress that I've made is I can see your comments now on the screen. So if, if anybody's out there, uh, just type something into the comment area so I can, I can check that out and make sure it's working properly, please. And if you have any questions, just go ahead and, and put them down in the comment section. I will go back and answer them after I'm done. I'm just making, I'm going to clean my palette up a little bit. I need a clear spot to mix this color. There we go. I'm just taking a little red and blue to make a red violet. red to start with. There we go. For those of you who like to garden, there is a variety of Daphne called Carol Mac Mackey which is an early spring bloomer, and it has a magnificent, oh, oh, look, Mary, hey, cool, okay, it's working, yay. <laughs> anyway, the uh, Carol Mackey Daphne will fill your yard with scent in late winter, early spring, when you least expect it. What I love about my Daphne is that it's located along the side of my driveway and I um, I always forget about it every year and then I'll, I'll come in and I'll see this pink haze over to the side and I'm like oh there it is there it is Okay, so at this stage, I can pretty well tell if, a, if I have all the places working that, I'm, that I want to have going at the same time here. And um, so here it is, the light first pass. 
nothing too defined, just enough to keep me on track. And now I'll go in and I'll put the middle tones here and there. I don't know if you can hear the rooster, he's excited. There, um, I heard a few birds this morning outside the window singing their beautiful spring songs. Not a lot, just a couple. They're just starting to arrive. All right, now I need, I want to put some shadow tones in the white of the petals of the hellbore. And so I need a nice clean place on my palette. Usually I leave the paint on my palette. I like the mud to help tone things accordingly. But every once in a while, you need to clear a spot if you're, say you're doing a sky or, or white petals so that you don't get mud where you don't want it. So let's take a look at this beautiful thing. Now, with a very dilute mixture of a pale, kind of grayish violet, I'm just going to sketch some of these shapes with my brush. So I'm beginning I'm beginning to draw now a little bit. And if you look closely, there are some beautiful little uh, folds. Can you see that? In the petals. Okay. And now I'm going to get a slightly deeper tone, just very subtle, just the tiniest bit. And I'm just going to put a couple of spots, I'm going to indicate them where the stronger shadows are. And get a little extra something in here. Now I don't care if this color runs a little bit here, that's going to help me. So I'm just going to let that do its thing. And now I'm going to work on the leaf a little bit more. So the, the stem has this kind of gorgeous mahogany tone to it. So that's got some red and brown. And, um, and there's also some sort of speckly designs on the stem. So let's see if we can get some of that. Now I'm going to vary the tone. I don't want I don't want my darks to be all over. So I just want to keep them kind of centrally located there. Maybe a little something down here. And I'm taking a green mixture, a little more blue this time because these are very dark leaves. 
and still keeping it fairly dilute, I'm just going to go into more of the, the shadow areas. I can leave a couple of indications of veins here and there. For instance, let me let me see if I can zoom in for you. I should have thought about that earlier. There we go. That's better, huh? Okay, a little more. Yeah. All right. So um, all I'm doing is I'm going on either side of the central vein. Now my light just cut out. I hope you can still see. I lost my charge. All right, now we're now we're painting just by the the north light in my studio, and because it's a blue day, it's probably got a cool cast to it. So when I when I post the image later on the on the website, you should be able to see the. Um, the actual tonalities. I'm going to keep an eye on the time. Okay, we've got about 10 more minutes. So I'm going to go fast. And remember, these are these are just little sketches. These are these are not full illustrations or paintings are just sort of um, little warm-up exercises that will help you to get to know your specimen. It will um, let you see what your color mixtures look like together. It'll help you to refine your composition. It's a sketch and you if you have a nice sketchbook or if you want to learn how to make a sketchbook, we'll, we'll have a uh, a video on that soon. You can just use them whenever you can, hopefully once a day or whatever works, and you can have a nice little collection of these pictures or, or use them for note cards the way I'm going to do. Okay. So let's get into that Daphne a little bit, and this time I'm going in with some violet. Actually, let me, I want to get, I want to indicate that stem before we get too far with this. So let's just send that to there. Buster. Woof woof. Could be the UPS man. This is the little Johnny jump up. If if you do have a garden 
I hope you have Johnny jump ups in your garden because they are just the most cheerful little things to have. I have them everywhere. I always I always try to whenever I'm weeding I, I dig up a few and put them in a special place so that they'll reseed and I'll have plenty. And they make wonderful garnishes for deviled eggs, which is one of my specialties. Dandy's dainty deviled eggs. And I like to use the um, the little Johnny jump ups to as an edible gar garnish because these are edible flowers. I'm pretty sure you can eat the leaves too, but you would have to check on that. They don't really have much of a flavor, but they're very pretty. And they have, so they have a uh, kind of a red violet set of larger petals, and then they've got these sort of secondary bluish toned petals. Now I feel like we need a little accent in here. There we go. Another thing that I'm working on is getting all my students hooked up to Zoom so that we can have a, a virtual critique session. So if you've been busy working on your pictures and you'd like some help, we can look at them together and, and talk about what, what you can do to improve them. So if you don't have a Zoom account already, I strongly recommend that you consider getting one. I think it's great. And you can start practicing with your friends and your family. And you'd be surprised how quickly you get used to it and how easy it is. It's free, completely free. You can do it on your phone, you can do it on your desktop. No, <laughs> I'm not sponsoring them, but it is a very awesome tool, especially when you can't see people in person. So let's get back to the leaves. Now I'm making a, um, a full strength, medium to dark green mixture. Let me get my leaf out here. There we go. So this is coming along pretty well. We've been working at it now for just about half an hour. So that's not too long a time to set aside to work on your pictures. And uh, I'm going to take some, some of this brown on my palette and just indicate a couple of those spots. These are kind of frost burn and characteristic bits on some of these leaves. The other thing I want to do, just because, just because we can, the uh, jump ups have those beautiful little stripes. Where are you? Sorry. <laughs> there we go. 
get on there. Oh my goodness gracious, there. You see that? Too close? There. There we go. Oh, I just want to grab a couple of those on here. Just, just a few little strokes. I can improve the shape of this petal. There we go. All right, so there you have it. And of course you could go much longer and uh, make it much better if you choose or not. Personally, I, I really like these loose little studies. And, um, and very quickly, I just want to let you know that I am going to be having, hi, I'm going to have my first ever online class and it's going to involve product that you will buy ahead of time, which I will then mail to you, plus all the, the card kit, the pieces of the cards and so forth. And I'm writing up a description of it on the website so you can understand it better. But before we leave, I wanted to show you, I just want to show you the stamp set we're going to be using. So this is called Positive Thoughts, and I really, really love this set. It's just, I think it's one of the most versatile sets that I've used. And the reason I like it is because it has these beautiful natural elements. It's got the maiden hair fern leaf, the fritillaria butterfly, I think that's a dahlia in the lower right. It could be a chrysanthemum, but let's call it a dahlia. It's got a feather and it's got that lovely little design motif and it's got some really, really nice sentiments. So the sentiments read, sending positive thoughts and feel good wishes. Friends like you mean more every year and hugs, prayers and love. Things that we can certainly use more of right now. And I have some samples, I've been playing with it and I have some, let me zoom out a little bit now. It's probably a better way of doing this, but that'll work for now. So here's, here are some ideas of the things that you can do with the set. And um, it's just, I think it's kind of fun to see how different they can all look. Changing the color and the papers. This is the one that we're going to be doing something closest to. And so the, these are just your kind of straightforward greeting cards. But I also have something that we call fancy folds. So here's, here's an example. This I'm, I'm doing this just in a monochromatic design just to um, see how the elements all work together. Okay, so this, this card stands up like this, and when you're looking at it from the front, it looks something like that. Okay, and, and this, has a, um, this, in, this has a number of different stamping techniques that I want to share with you. Here's an example of, a, of another fun fold card. This one tucks in like that. And then it has a little tag where you can write your sentiment, or you could put a gift card or a photograph, whatever you like. And then this one has what we call a belly band. This slides down, and the top opens up, and inside you have an area for your sentiment, and that comes out. You close it up and just slide that right back up like so to hold it shut. 
So that's all for today. Thank you so much for joining me. I'll be back on Saturday with Paper Crafting Saturday. And please check the website here to stay tuned for the upcoming card class. And this is coming right up because I want you to be able to take advantage of, this, of the special deal that's going on right now where you can save a bundle of money. And I hope you'll join my team and go for that starter kit. So go under, go to uh, dandeliancodgedesign.com and go under join to read more about it. There's, there's really a, a terrific deal that will uh, get you all set up to follow along with all of my upcoming workshops and uh, online classes, both in watercolor and paper crafting. So I hope you stay well, get outside into the sunshine, enjoy the day, and I will see you next Saturday and be back here next Wednesday. Bye for now.